Hi, I'm Dr. James Voos from University Hospitals Cleveland. Today, we're going to talk about using the Synergy Vision Panoscope, uh, switching from 30 to 70 degree visualization in both a diagnostic arthroscopy, also in referencing our ACL reconstruction, allowing us to visualize our ACL footprints for precise tunnel placement. The Panoscope allows for the ease of navigation transitioning from the 30 to 70 degree arthroscope without having to change the lens, allowing us to be more efficient and more precise in tunnel placement. We'll start with our standard diagnostic arthroscopy of the knee beginning in the patellofemoral joint, working with our standard 30-degree view, being able to visualize both our patella and trochlea. The unique part of the Synergy Vision Panoscope is switching to our Panoscope view, allowing for that broader visualization of the entire patellofemoral articulation, looking for articular cartilage lesions, and in cases of patella instability, being able to assess the depth of the trochlea, the medial facet, patella chondral injuries, as well as the lateral trochlea injuries, all in one view, giving you a much more comprehensive view of the level of pathology. And easily transitioning to the 70-degree and the 30-degree scope allows you to maneuver around the joint for your typical diagnostic arthroscopy. Right, as we continue our diagnostic scope, we get our standard 30-degree view by moving to our panoscope allows us to get a much more global view of the entire condyle assessing for articular cartilage lesions. Again, moving over to our notch, and we'll go back to our standard 30-degree scope again, showing how easy it is to transition with one push of a button. Going into our lateral compartment, being able to assess the root. And again, getting that much more global view of the uh, articular cartilage surfaces and global view of the meniscus. Coming over to our medial compartment, again, able to visualize with our standard 30-degree scope and without having to change. Again, moving to that pano view, assessing the entire articular cartilage surface, as well as being able to see back towards the root. One of the most versatile applications of the vision panoscope is assessing the ACL footprints, both on the femur and on the tibia. Here we have our standard 30-degree arthroscopic view showing our tibial footprint and looking around the corner to our femoral footprint. Typically, at this point in the case, we would switch to a 70-degree arthroscope, which takes some additional time, as well as uh, the additional needing to uh, open a 70-degree lens. Here, just with the push of a button, switching from the 30 to the, uh, the pano view allows you to really visualize the entire ACL footprint. Your 70-degree scope right, brings you around even further. So that 30-degree view all the way over here, where you can't quite visualize your footprint, allows you to have that direct visualization. Now you have much more accurate footprint assessment, much more accurate tunnel placement. You're able to visualize the back wall as well as the entire anatomy of the ACL. So we'll show more of that here later as we're drilling our tunnels. And as we published previously, utilizing the 70-degree scope and now the panoscope view allows us, as we're drilling our femoral ACL tunnel, again, to have accurate tunnel placement as well as accurate depth, being able to measure both the front and the back of our tunnel to assure the appropriate depth so we don't have any bone plug and graft mismatch. In addition, coming down to the tibial footprint, we'll go back to our standard 30-degree view uh, which we typically see, and often it's hard to see uh, ACL material, graft material flipped over here in front of the intermeniscal ligament. Now with our panoscope allows for that easy view all the way in front to be able to see the anterior horn of our lateral meniscus and any ACL uh, material that may be flipped forward that can cause a cyclops lesion. This also allows for that full assessment of very accurate tunnel placement as we place our guide to assure that we're very accurate. Again, with our 70-degree scope, having that similar view. If we look again, our angular view with our 30-degree scope doesn't quite give us that full perspective. Now with our panoscope allows, again, visualizing the entire footprint, much more accurate placement of our tibial guide. Right here, we're preparing to do our notchplasty again with our standard 30-degree view, where we would prepare our notchplasty in efforts to see the back wall. And with a standard 30-degree scope, there is often the need to do a larger notchplasty than you would otherwise plan to do in order to see the back wall. By utilizing the panoscope and the 70-degree view, now we can see the entire 
uh, notch here, the, the wall on fosse, allowing us to take the appropriate amount of bone so now we can protect the ACL graft from impingement but avoid excessive bone resection. Yeah, utilizing the shaver here allows to continue the visualization without having the excessive suction with the fat pad collapsing on you. And again, with the utilizing the panoscope allows us to be much more precise with our notch plasty, again, taking just the appropriate amount of bone here to, to uh, pass the graft without impingement. Right. So again, we can see all the way to the back very easily, having a nice smooth notch from front to back. And again, if we sit here with our panoscope, let's go back to our 30. We show the difference of how you're looking down the wall versus straight at the wall. You have, again, a much more precise view. Right. Here we are after removing our ACL debriding back to our tibial and femoral stumps. Our notchplasty is complete. This is one of the areas where the panoscope has the most versatility in femoral tunnel placement. And here with the typical 30-degree view, as we're feeling around the back wall, attempting to make that 70-degree or that 7-millimeter uh, measurement here off the back wall, it is very challenging with our depth perception to have accurate tunnel placement. So one of our most common errors in ACL failure is poor tunnel or improper tunnel placement. So uh, using the panoscope to increase that accuracy can increase the outcomes of our ACL reconstructions. Now by switching to our panoscope allows us to have a much more accurate visualization and depth perception from our back wall, measuring the, those seven millimeters anterior to get our most accurate tunnel placement to avoid that tunnel mismatch. One of our other key benefits of using the panoscope now that we can visualize the footprint accurately, it avoids the need to have to hyperflex the knee during the surgery, which can limit your visualization. Now that we have our ability to see the entire footprint utilizing our flexible reamer, now we can place our tunnel accurately, leaving our knee at that 90 degree position, which frees up hands and space in the operating room. So now we can drill our tunnel here much more accurately, again, looking uh, right at the, the face of the footprint. Yeah. Again, with the panoscope, just with a slight rotation of the hand, gives you much more global view of that pin entry. Again, visualizing your back wall throughout the entire process. But here now with our pin placement, as we've published previously, the difference from the 30 to 70 degree arthroscope, here now using our panoscope allows us to look from the top down, viewing our pin placement, getting very accurate measurements. And as we place our reamer, we'll have even more accurate measurements as to the front and back positions of the tunnel. An additional advantage of the panoscope is being able to see the reamer pass through the medial portal and past the medial femoral condyle to avoid uh, any scuffing or injury to the medial femoral condyle, again, allowing that increased visualization to avoid any iatrogenic injury. Now, as we have the reamer in, again, a very versatile, uh, and one of the most advantageous parts of using the panoscope is as we drill our femoral tunnel, we're typically referencing here distally uh, to get our measurement. As we've recently published with our utilization of a 70-degree scope and the top-down view, the panoscope allows us to measure not only the front of our tunnel, but the back of our tunnel. And as recent studies have shown, coming through the medial portal, the tunnel entry can be oblique or, uh, or in ellipse uh, direction, where your distal portion of your tunnel may measure deeper than the posterior portion of your tunnel. So measuring off of the back wall gives you a much more accurate depth of your tunnel. That way, your bone plug, you avoid any tunnel and bone plug mismatch. So unique advantage of the panoscope is able to visualize uh, the posterior portion or the deep portion of your tunnel so you have accurate depth. Utilizing our panoscope, again, our typical view straight on, being able to look over the top and measure off the back wall. 
Now, as we continue to insert our reamer, we know exactly the depth, both the distal and posterior ports, uh, portions of our femoral tunnel. We can continue on. Here's a nice example of being able to measure our front portion of the wall appears to be about 21, whereas the back portion of the wall is that 19. So if we really want accurate placement, we can measure off the back. We'll go just a few, a uh, few more millimeters, getting there to 22. Perfect. Now we know the back wall is that 22. Again, for much more accurate tunnel placement. This is very important in our primary ACLs, but even more important in our revision surgeries where tunnel depth and protecting the back walls is most important. Here we are preparing our tibial tunnel guide pin placement. We've cleaned off the ACL footprint with our typical 30-degree arthroscope view, utilizing our references of the tibial spines, the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and the intrameniscal ligament. So our typical 30-degree view gives us that slightly oblique view by switching to our panoscope, gives us a, a much broader view, allowing us to mo uh, more easily visualize all of those frames of references, uh, also allowing for better depth perception and placement of our guide. Again, seeing in one view our intrameniscal ligament, our anterior horn of our lateral meniscus, and our tibial spines, allowing for us to triangulate for very accurate guide pin placement. In addition, it allows us to look directly at the pin coming in with that bird's eye view versus a more oblique shot, again, confirming our more accurate pin placement. Our tibial tunnel has been prepared with a 10 millimeter cylindrical reamer. Here's our typical 30 degree view where we can see the tunnel and particularly the back wall. It's a little bit harder to see that anterior wall to see circumferentially. By switching to our panoscope, now allows us to visualize the tunnel circumferentially, 360 degree view. This is important in our, our ACL tunnel drilling if you're using an all inside technique to get a sense of the depth of your tunnel. In a revision setting where you're looking for circumferential bleeding bone and removal of prior graft material or assessing where cystic or, uh, formation or tunnel widening may be. It also allows, in those circumstances, utilizing a bone dowel or needing accurate assessment of tunnel depth for us to visualize very accurately in all planes, circumferentially, the depth of your tunnel. Here's our standard 30-degree view of passing our button for our ACL tightrope. Again, 30-degree view, attempting to look up the tunnel to watch the button flip by switching to the panoscope allows you to look directly up the tunnel, circumferential view, watching the button pass up the tunnel and allowing for that safe visualization of flipping of the uh, femoral button as we prepare to pass our bone plug. Now, having that direct visualization of the button flipping as well as your tactile feed pulling back to know that your button is flipped. So dual confirmation of both direct visualization of the flipping of the button, as well as your tactile pulling back to assure that the button has flipped on the far cortex. And in particular, referencing our study before from the 30 to 70 degree scope, now we can see the back wall assure our bone plug is flush with the back wall, very accurate bone plug placement. Okay, now we're in our panoscope mode where we can see our entire ACL construct from anterior to our tibia to make sure that there is no uh, ACL uh, stump or debris all the way up our tunnel. Now we've tensioned our, our uh, internal brace here posteriorly, so we're in nice, good tension. Our graft is tensioned, and we're going to refine our uh, tensioning of the graft here in extension. So we'll, we've done our cycling, we'll do our final tensioning here in full extension. And again, with the panoscope allowing us to look all the way up the tunnel, getting a full, fine view. Excellent. Seeing that last little bit of tension here in our graft. Again, in one view, being able to visualize from our tibial tunnel all the way up into our femoral tunnel. So seeing that nice tension here in extension, completing our ACL reconstruction.